Exile and Redemption. If we start with the very first exile, we have to go all the way back to Adam and Eve. What was the source of that exile? You see, if we look at Jewish sources, we learn that God told Adam that he should not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam then told Eve, we sh you shouldn't touch this tree. The snake heard Eve discussing how she can't touch the tree and he saw an opportunity. He pushed her against the tree. She saw that she didn't die as a result of touching the tree and therefore assumed, ah, he wasn't being serious, God. I could therefore eat from the tree. She ate and therefore Adam ate. What's the lesson here? That the communication between the husband and the wife was off. And the source of the exile was just this, communication. In fact, right away we see that Adam hid away and he was embarrassed to communicate with God. He was hiding away from God. So another symptom of exile is not just the idea of a wrong in being able to communicate with another in truthful words, in genuine, sincere words, but also in order to communicate with God. Now let's fast forward a bit. We go to the story of the Exodus. If we start in the book of Exodus, the book of Shemot in Hebrew, which means names, we see these are the names of the children of Israel that went down into Mitzrayim. And right after giving all these names, it says, and a man from the tribe of Levi took a woman. Question is, we just went over, that the, the book is called names, the portion of the Torah is called names, and yet now we're saying a man and a woman without giving their names. When the Jewish people were in exile, they lost touch with their identity, and more than that, we see that they were so crushed by the hard labor that they couldn't communicate. The beginning of the redemption, though, came when eventually they got enough is enough, and they let out a great shout. When you can't talk, it's one thing at a time. You start with a sigh. You start with a shout. So... All of redemption, as it is portrayed in the Passover story, has a great deal to do with the idea of speech, rectifying speech, being able to communicate, being able to pray. Therefore, what do we do on this day? First of all, the holiday is called Pesach. Our sages tell us Pesach Aramaic is Pe means mouth, Sach is a speaking mouth. Already telling us that the essence of redemption and this holiday is speech. Moving forward, the Haggadah. The Haggadah is the scripture that we use when we recount the events at our Passover Seder. And the Haggadah literally means a telling. Again, the idea of speech. Lahagid, to speak, to tell. Then, when we look even further, our sages tell us in the Haggadah that anyone who speaks at length about this is praised. The idea of speaking at length, again, speech is the essence here. So all around we see rituals and we see uh, lessons that are trying to portray a certain idea. And that idea is that we as individuals, when we're in exile, cannot communicate with our Creator, cannot communicate with each other in a proper way, in a genuine, sincere way, in a way that the other person can really genuinely hear what we're saying and understand what we're saying because of speech being lost. In fact, the Kabbalists, we can go even further, say that this month of Nisan has an action associated with it as every month does. And what is the action associated with the, this month? It is the action of speech. The letter, the, the tribe also portray the same idea. Because our Kabbalists teach us that the sovereignty is the mouth, the malchut in the spirit is the mouth. And who else is the malchut? It's the tribe of Judah. So this week's, this month's tribe is Judah. Again, the idea of the mouth, the malchut, the sovereignty. Who has control of the masses? He who controls the propaganda. So, interestingly, Rabbi Nachman tells us then that we also begin right after the Seder of Passover, counting the Omer. What does Omer li literally mean? Omer means to say. Again, interesting connection, right? But the Omer was also a measure of barley. And we, we go ahead and each day we recount the Omer count of the day. Now, 
what is it about barley? Rabbi Nachman tells us barley is food for animals. In Judaism, it works in such a way that you have four kingdoms in terms of beings. You have the inanimate, the plant, the animal, and the human. But the human isn't the term that's used by the sages. The term that is used is medaber, the speaker. So Rabbi Nachman tells us that on Passover, God himself shines forth a great light that gives us the potential without any work of our own to be able to speak. He gives us an arousal, as the Kabbalists say, from above for that one night. But then he says, now you do the work. You go back to being on the level of an animal. You have to bring barley, the food of an animal, because you're on that level. And through doing the work for seven weeks of seven weeks times seven being 49, and then finally on the 50th day, uh, on that day you get to bring leavened bread, bread being the food of people. Now you're on the level of a medaber. After I gave you an arousal from above, now you've done the work from below, and now you've fully come, in, come out of Egypt. But for the main point, and what was that main point? The main point was coming to the fullest, completest form of freedom and redemption when you have the Torah, the Torah being the instructions, the Torah being a level of self-realization. Maybe we all merit to truly bring our speech to rectification, to do a fixing of what went wrong so long ago, and ultimately to see the true monarchy with the true king in this year, Mamash. Amen.